Hi everybody, welcome. Glad you can make it tonight. I'm going to rely on my notes a little bit tonight. I haven't quite entered the uh, PowerPoint presentation age yet, but um, hopefully this year I'll be making the transition to that. We like to think of the office as an educational facility as well as a healing facility. We like to offer lots of resources, classes, and information, whether it's on the internet or you know, Facebook and Twitter pages and things like that. Uh, we are always putting out their information for you, so if you're not hooked, linked up with all that, make sure that you find out about it. Does anybody in here belong to an organization or group or anything that has speakers come in every now and then at work or church or that sort of thing? No? Okay. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about tonight something that's close to everybody's heart, and that is inflammation. Now, I'm sure everybody knows a little something about this topic, right? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's big in the news right now. That's, but, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, information out there, and some of it's confusing, and some of it's not confusing. Um, but how many of you feel like you have a pretty good grip about what inflammation is? So, so. Who can tell me what, what's inflammation? What is it? Anybody want to volunteer? Okay. Well, there's there's different kinds of inflammation. Uh, inflammation can be, you know, when you get those little paper cuts, and you, and their skin gets red on either side of the little cut. That's inflammation. And uh, when you sprain your ankle, and you have, you know, blood cells rushing to the area to heal the the wound, that's the inflammation is part of the healing process. But what gets us in trouble is when we have sustained, chronic, ongoing, especially systemic inflammation. You can have uh, sustained, ongoing, chronic inflammation, say in a gum infection. You can have it in um, a, a low-grade bacterial or viral infection. It can create a long-term, sustained inflammatory response. And it's this long-term, ongoing, lower high grade systemic inflammatory response that the doctors now, the researchers are linking to I see how many of them I could do without looking at my list. <laughs> Alzheimer's, heart disease, all the all the itises, the arthritis, the rheumatoid arthritis, um, even diabetes. And so the researchers are kind of scrambling and they're discovering, you know, the drug companies are scrambling and they're trying to find new uses for Celebrex, of course, you know, it's like, uh, you know, hey, if we can figure out that Celebrex is good for heart disease or Alzheimer's patients, then we've got a whole new market demand for this product. So everybody's kind of rushing in and a lot of the research is really interesting. Um, so, we've got I'm going to refer to my list in case I left any out. Alzheimer's, heart disease, diabetes, many types of cancer, MS, dementia, asthma, osteoporosis, disc degeneration, joint de degeneration, and others are all being linked in some way or another to inflammation. Interesting, huh? So, how would you know if you had chronic inflammation? Doesn't, what would be the signs and symptoms? It doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. <laughs> what doesn't, doesn't go doesn't. away? The inflammation. <laughs> the inflammation. Okay. Well, what is inflammation? There's three components to inflammation. Does anybody know what they are? Redness. Redness. You got it. Redness. So when I, I, I feel like if I had a PowerPoint, I'd feel like I was a lecturer. <laughs> and with this, I feel like I'm a teacher. So, redness, what else? Swelling. Swelling. Exactly. And there's one more. Mm. Pain. Heat. Heat. Oh. I'm going to need an eraser soon. So, heat, redness, and swelling. As a matter of fact, the Romans referred to inflammation as the fire within because of the heat component of it. 
But how would you know if you had inflammation? What would your symptoms be? Okay. Really, it's signs and symptoms. Okay. So, you eat inflammatory foods. We're going to talk about that. Abnormal fatigue, tiredness. Overweight. We should quit talking about it. <laughs> As a matter of fact, fat itself, fat tissue is inflammatory. It causes systemic inflammation. Fat tissue, the fat cells, secrete inflammatory chemicals that go throughout the bloodstream. Is that going to be going to do it? Mm -hmm. Okay. A little to me. <laughs> cause fat cells cause inflammatory chemicals to be distributed through the bloodstream out throughout the whole body. Pain and aches. As a matter of fact, there's a phenomenon called allodynia, I think it is. In other words, Wherever I mash on you, you're tender. That is one of the big signs of chronic inflammation. Exercise is stressful. Exercise is stressful. Easy to get cold and flu. Early aging and degeneration. Those are all signs of chronic, long-term systemic inflammation. Now there's a lot that we could talk about tonight. I really, want, I really want this to be brief and interesting, but there's so many things that they're discovering now. Say, for example, um, you know, cholesterol, heart attacks, right? Well, what they're discovering now is if you have, you know, there's uh, inflammatory markers in your blood, the CRP, the C-reactive protein. If that is at 0.5 milligrams per liter or less, which is really low, you can have cholesterol off the charts, and you're not going to have a heart attack. So it's actually, they're connecting inflammation as more of an important marker than cholesterol and balance. So when you get your blood done, ask your doctor to run a CRP. It's part of your, it's part of your blood profile. Um, they're, they're thinking now that the inflammation comes in and busts up the, 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 the body's response, inflammatory response, comes in and busts up the plaque and that's why some people can have plaque and have heart attacks and some people can have plaque and not have heart attacks. Because with the inflammation, they're suspecting at this point that the, uh, the inflammation process comes in and busts up the plaque and that's what causes the strokes and heart attack. Kind of interesting, huh? Mm -hmm. So how do, you get, how do you get inflammation? How do you get it? Some foods, huh? Exactly. Foods is one way. So let's think about it for a minute. Inflammation is your body's response, natural response to healing. I mean to injury or illness. So several different things we could do. Um, one, of the, it, one of the most critical ways to cause uh, long-term chronic systemic inflammation is stress. That has to do with the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands secrete cortisol and when we're in fight or flight mode the body is prone to become inflamed. Um, and you know the, those, cort those cortisones, those cortisol, the fight or flight response, it's very interesting because there's actually one of the biggest causes uh, that I see in my practice of course that is related to the fight or flight response is spinal subluxation, the misalignment of the vertebrae. There are certain areas of the spine that when they misalign, I don't have my spine here, but there's certain areas of the spine when they misalign, let's see if I can do a little artist thing here. That's okay, Sam. I'm just gonna do a little artist thing here. <laughs> hey, not bad, okay. There's certain natural curves to the spine and there are certain areas where the spine attaches to the spinal cord. Spine attaches to the spinal cord, especially in the upper cervical spine. 
C1 and 2, again down and sometimes in C5, and sometimes again down in the sacrum. So if you have um, spinal misalignments putting pressure on the nervous system, it can actually affect the spinal cord in such a way that it creates a, a long-term, ongoing fight-or-flight response. Thanks. So, come in and, has anybody come in, adjust, gotten adjusted, and felt really relaxed afterwards? Mm -hmm. Twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> so the adjustments take the pressure.